Hermes Academy. Power, patience, continence, and faith. We teach virtue. All right, so next section. What is it? 33, verse 33 through 43? Mm -hmm. 33, this is where Hermes is asking her questions, but he, he wanting her to further explain different things that she has said, and she's um, explaining some of them to him, but she's also telling him that he's going to have to um, wait and hear some of this, the things that she said. You notice how how smart they are being with Hermes. Being because she's not giving Hermes any she's not giving him anything he's not asking for. She's making him almost beg for the answers. And that's important is because as Hermes is asking for these he's actually humbling himself and putting him in a position to learn. Whereas if she just keep spouting out seemingly random facts it'll overwhelm him and he won't catch as many so she gives him just as much as she asked for and then she gets ready to walk away and Hermes is like oh wait wait I don't fully understand and then she comes back and she says oh simple man let me let me help you out a little bit more and she helps him and then you know he gets his feel and she kind of senses that and she starts to walk away again and he's like, hey, wait, um, still don't get it. Mm -hmm. Notice 35, his, it says, uh, some shall rejoice and others weep. And this fits into what I was learning the other day. Something I've never really understood. And that's the... This whole age of Aquarius thing. I've always heard of that. Like I said, I am an Aquarius. So every time somebody talk about age of Aquarius, you know, my ears kind of perk up. Because I'm wondering what in the world they're talking about. And, you know, I was into the horoscope at one time. Um, praying that that little piece of paper would actually give me something I need to help me throughout my day. And the Lord saved me from that. So I do know the difference between horoscopes. Astro I do know the difference in astrology and astronomy. Um, <clears throat> but you say you was you was thinking something about it. Or? Well, the the a the, what it is the a the see our Lord and Savior when he was born two thousand years ago he ushered in. The age of Pisces. You know, he didn't necessarily put us in the age of Pisces. He was just born at the beginning of the age of Pisces. And what we get in the age of Pisces is deception. The age of Pisces is, is the age of deception. Okay, where are you getting these? I know that, you know, Pisces is um, February, Libra, October, but... No, we're talking about things that lag. We're talking about this thing lasts for 2,000 years. This age ages last for over 2,000 years. They're not really sure how long they last or when they change. Um, so these um, these symbols are actually, I think you said they were actually stars or something like that? The, the what, a series, there's the symbols, the the Pisces names, and Aquarius. Names, and stuff. Names are yeah, they're, they, they are star constellations. The significance of the 12 star constellations. There are a lot of star constellations up there. That was, I don't know, 100, 1,000, maybe a bunch of them up there. Um, but most of which we don't really pay much attention to or we never even never really heard about. We heard about the big 12 and the significance of those 12, you know, Capricorn and Leo and Virgo and Libra and all of that, is that they are, and I don't have the technical term, but they are located in such a way to where our sun passes through these constellations. So you look at our sun right now, if you can look past the sun, wherever it's at in the sky, you look past it, what you're going to see is a certain constellation. And what the people who, you know, study this stuff a lot, I'm not, you know, the, the astronomers or the astrologers, they say that 
the sun is in Libra or the sun is in Aquarius. Mm -hmm. Well, that's talking about something that changes every month. Or, you know, but what I'm talking about when we're changing from the age of Pisces to the age of Aquarius, that's a 2,000 year long period. Mm -hmm. You've been in Pisces for 2,000 years. And you don't go to Aquarius. But the big thing to understand about this transition is that the age of Pisces was about deception. It was about stuff like the UN taking over the world. It was stuff like Hitler. It's stuff like all of us getting to where we believe that money is our only only hope for everything in life. Uh, believing that, you know, TV is our babysitter for our kids. That's the age of deception. The Catholic Church coming in and taking over the Hebrew faith. Uh, uh, this whole Jesus Christ thing being recreated by, you know, by, by the Catholic Church. All of that's age of deception stuff. All of this age of deception, that was a time period we lived in where we were allowed to be deceived. Now, the age of Aquarius is almost actually opposite. The age of Aquarius is where you become more in tune with the Father himself. Whereas now, you know, we're alienate, alienated from the Father in our ignorance or our, our lack of understanding. We're going to swing, full pendulum swing to the other side where we're going to be fully in tune with the Father, fully in tune with the Creator. We, we're actually going to be able to see Him on the planet. You know, we're going to be able to see He's going to be down here. And I'm not sure if we're going to have to go to Jerusalem or just look toward the east or whatever, but we're going to be able to see the Lord here on the planet. So that, that's something that we ain't, our minds can't really wrap around yet, but that's where we're headed. So when you look here, in a long time, get, when you look here, verse 35 says that some are going to weep and some, some are going to be happy. Well, the Pisces people are going to be pretty sad because they don't want to change to where we're at now. Pisces people are going to want to stay Pisces. Whereas the Aquarius people who are pretty much downtrodden right now because we're living before our time. We're living in an age where, you know, you know, you walk around talking about we don't need money and everybody talking about you childish or whatever because you think that those are Aquarius-minded people talking to Pisces-minded people. And these Pisces-minded people aren't going, they're not they're not going to be happy about the change. They're not going to be happy about the change at all because it flips the script on everything they know and love. I mean, I could take $5 right now and go down to the store and get, you know, somebody to do whatever I want. He'll shine my shoes for me and, you know, they shine and give them $5. Well, that ain't going to always work. Eventually, we're going to have to learn uh, gratitude. We're going to have to learn how to interact with people without being able to buy them. Not just shoot them 20 and say, you know, you like me. You really don't have to make them like you. All right. So where are we at? Oh, what else is in 33? I'm going to take bits and pieces. Anything else in this? Here's what she's asking him. She, she, he's asking her who, about herself, and she in thirty eight. No, and he says um, she explains to him that she's she explains to him that she's the church there in thirty eight. Mm -hmm. Then again, we get down here in forty two, and he's talking about the water and how important the water is again, and he's talking about baptism. It's not really clear that that's what they're talking about, but right there in forty two. She's going to, she's going to tell him that his life is saved by water, and what she's referring to is baptism again. Mm -hmm. All right, you want to go ahead and read it? Yes. And when she had shown me these things, she would have departed. But I said to her, Lady, what does it profit me to see these things and not understand what they mean? She answered and said unto me, You are very cunning, and that you are desirous to know those things which relate. To the tower, yes, said I, lady, that I may declare them unto the brethren, and they may rejoice, and hearing these things, may glorify Elohim with great glory. Then she said, Many indeed shall hear them, and when they shall have heard them, some shall rejoice, and others weep. And yet even those, if they shall repent, shall rejoice too. 36. Hear therefore what I shall say concerning the parable of the tower, and after this be no longer impotent with me about the revelation. 
For these revelations have an end, seeing they are fulfilled. But thou dost not leave off to desire revelations, for thou art very urgent. As for the tower which thou seest built, it is myself, namely the church, which have appeared to thee both now and hitherto. Wherefore, ask what thou wilt concerning the tower, and I will reveal it unto thee, that thou mayest rejoice with the saints. And I said unto her, Lady, because thou hast thought me once worthy to receive from thee the revelation of all these things, declare them unto me. She answered me, Whatsoever is fit to be revealed unto thee shall be revealed. Only let thy heart be with Yahuwah, and doubt not whatsoever thou shalt see. 41. I asked her, Lady, why is the tower built upon the water? She replied, I said before to thee that thou art I said before to thee, she replied, I said before to thee that thou wert very wise to inquire diligently concerning the building, wherefore thou shalt find the truth. Hear therefore while the tower is built upon the water, because your life is and shall be saved by water, for it is founded by the word of the Almighty and honorable men. For it is founded by the word of the Almighty, an honorable name, and is supported by the invisible power and virtue of Elohim. Your life is and shall be saved by water. Your life is water, and it shall be saved by water. What they say, our bodies is 90-some percent water. And when you, when you read books like Adam and Eve... And you hear about the first baptism and the way he explains it and says, okay, from now on, this will be um, how your purification method and you everybody's going to have to be baptized twice in their life is what it says in Adam and Eve, once in the flesh uh, to get the Holy Spirit and then once kind of after the flesh in order to get you pure enough to actually let into this heavenly place. So she's telling them there again about the water. Was right there in thirty in thirty five. He well again. It says some shall rejoice, some shall rejoice, and others weep. And yet even these, if they shall repent, shall rejoice too. So you got three kinds of people here. You got the people who are close to Elohim now, who's only going to take small nudges in order to get them to the point where they can live unto God. Then you have the other people who aren't, who are too far away. Well, some of them um, who decide to repent and learn, they're going to rejoice too. But the ones that don't are going to be counted as rebels and they're going to die. And what does repent mean? Repent means turn, to turn, to turn around, to, to make a change of what you're doing. I mean, for instance, if I am... Trying to think of something I repented of the other day, but I find myself in in opposition to the Lord's commandments. And when I discovered this thing, you know, you know that He doesn't want me to eat rabbit or whatever. Well, I put the rabbit down. I don't, I don't eat the rabbit anymore. I don't. I repented of that thing. You don't do it no more. It's an acknowledgement of the error and a decision to not do it anymore. You know, and it's basically. Right? What do you think? Yeah. I think you just can't say, I'm sorry for it, and then next week you do it again. That reminds me of um, the way it talks about um, Herman's wife, how it says you're just supposed to give, you know, give, forgive her once. Is that it? One time or something that it says like that. You just can't. You know, continue to say, I repent, I repent, I repent, and keep doing the same thing over and over again. You have to actually uh, start, do, or, you know, start making changes. Mm -hmm. 
verse 40, in verse 40 it says, Only let thy heart be with the Lord, and doubt not whatsoever thou shalt see. Now, we're in the vision part of this, which is, you know, this is a three-part book, and it's kind of, vision is kind of like the introductory part to, you know, the whole series. And she's showing him a sample of the stuff that's to come, but he's about to see some serious stuff. And she's saying, doubt not what you're about to see. Some of it is going to be so strange to him that he's going to want to doubt it, mm -hmm. you know. And she's telling him what, what you're seeing, what you're about to hear is real. You know, don't doubt on what you're about to see. I'm about to show you some supernatural stuff, and you need to be prepared to see the supernatural. Don't, you know, just because you don't understand it or it don't make sense to you in your carnal mind don't mean it's not true. What you're about to see is true. You better believe every lick of it is what she's telling. And we're walking around doubting them all. I don't know about that. And a lot of people will pick up Hermes, and they'll do just that, you know, because it don't fit into their purview or what they think things are supposed to be they'll doubt but these are people who are doubtful anyway it ain't much you're gonna be able to do to help them anyway they're gonna be doubtful anyway and they're just looking for an excuse